Okay, so what's good, y'all? I completely apologize for uh, for being late. Um, you know, I had some some quick phone calls. You know, trying to run my businesses and whatnot, trying to get my show on different platforms. But today we're gonna talk about um, Camilla. Is it Camilla? Camilla? I don't know. I'm gonna call you as Camilla. Camilla Harris. Camilla Harris. Uh, the breakdown of her. Now, disclaimer, disclaimer, full disclaimer, this is a disclaimer for all my shows. Uh, please do your own fact checking. Do not take anything I say uh, as 100% factual. Please do your own research about anything that I may talk about. Everything I talk about is strictly more so my opinion. It is opinionated on how I feel. Um, and I try to give a clear narrative on both sides of the table. Uh I do not support any individual candidate, so this is not me advertising for one side of the lane or the other. I am independent. I am not Democrat. <laughs> I am not a Republican. So, the first thing I want to say um, about her is she is a black woman. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, like, what type or... You know, whether she's Caribbean black, whether she's like motherland black, or whether she's African American black. Uh, she is a black woman. She's just not African American, but she is a black woman. Um, so, and I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about her as far as her blackness and what may be the issue. And then what may also be the issue as far as dealing with her past, her being a prosecutor and those things. So I'm going to continue with her being black. So here, here's what it is in a nutshell that I think is the issue. We as African Americans don't really identify with her. And I'm not speaking for the as the voice of all black people because every black person is entitled to their own opinion. But what I see from the majority, because I've asked different um, black people, you know, and they pretty much given me this sense that we don't identify with her um, as far as like we don't know you or, or really can trust the values that you present it. And on the definition or the the statement of her being black, I'm going to break this down to you. Because as you know, I'm the lost African. I support all Afro people, all black people, of every shade, every form. So, but here's something I want to clarify why here in America, there's been a, a form of a backlash about it. And I'm not taking nothing from all the other heritages. They are all beautiful. Um, Jamaicans, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, uh, Bohemians, because I have Bohemian bloodline, um, and even in the motherland. We, we all have beautiful melanated skin and our individual heritage, whether they are connected, are all beautiful in their own way. But here's the thing. So, the term black, like if you Google it, if you Google, um, you know, black person or who are black people, what will pop up as one of the results or search results is African American. And I'm going to stress that to tell you that there we go again. When slavery started and we got taken away from the motherland, we, after a while, no longer were accepted by our own people. So we couldn't be called African. They, they, they're like, no, you're, you're not African. It's not that way now. Um, the new millennials like me and other people are trying to bring our people back together. But for a very long time, we could not be... Uh, identified as African or our African brothers and sisters would not accept us back. Like, no, they're like, no, you're not African. So we can't take that title, right? So now we're in this new land trying to figure out who we are, understand the different black people that were there. And we had to reshape our identity, which is why the concept of black culture came about. We had to reshape our identity. Now, um, we had all these derogatory terms, and then we had black. So after the Emancipation Proclamation that was signed by Lincoln, and it, it freed the slaves on paper, 
I always say on paper, if we read the slaves on paper, we then wanted to re, uh, rebrand ourselves, re-identify ourselves on what is the term black. So the title, because black was a title for us, because that's all we had. We couldn't be called African. So black is a title for us. So we hold it to a super high standard. So whenever you say, like, yeah, that's a black man, we interpret it as we're talking about African Americans. Like, I really want you guys to understand the context. I'm not bashing her for being a black woman. I'm just trying to clarify you guys with what the majority may be trying to tell you. The title of black in America was only for us. Like, that's all we had. We did not have the title of being African. They would not allow us, our oppressors, or even our brothers and sisters during that time to call ourselves African. So, from that point on, hold on, guys. So, from that point on, we spent 100, 200 plus years trying to re identify, re bland, rebrand what is the word of their meaning, black. And then black culture came about, black music, soul music, soul food. So we we took that to a whole nother title uh, versus all the other Afro people in the African diaspora. They have their own title next to being black. If you understand what I mean, you have the Haitians, you have the Afro Puerto Ricans, you have the Jamaicans, you have the Bohemians, you have all the other nations in Africa. So, like, if you if you go and talk to them, this is like you'll you'll hear them say they'll be, you know, oh you're African. They'll correct. They'll they'll be like, yeah, but they'll correct you. They'll be like, yeah, but no, this is my actual title. I'm Nigerian. I'm Cameroon. I'm from the Congo. I'm Bohemian. I'm Jamaican. Do you see what I mean? They have a title that represents them. So what we had that represents us is black do you do you guys understand what i mean and what i'm trying to say now i'm going to go into kamala harris and why other people may be just against her on a general moral standpoint as far as her prosecuting background when she was doing legislations running people and things had the power to send people to jail okay now um one big thing that she did as far as I think it was the Attorney General of California or during her reign in the uh, legislative process in California, she had, or I believe it passed, a bill or proposal called truancy. So the basis of truancy was if your kids didn't go to school, she's going to lock your parents up. Now, as we know, all across America, uh, there are low in, low income poverty areas. There are hoods all across America. There are hoods all across America to where usually there are single parent family homes. It's one parent. There aren't a lot of like double parent family homes, or they aren't talked about in the media. There are a lot of single parent family homes. So, in that standpoint. How can you, not trying to understand their conditions and what they're going through, you're going to say, if your kid don't come to school, I don't care if you're the only parent in the house, we're going to lock you up. If you lock them up, how are they going to support their family? You know, not everybody has a great big family to support them, you know. So, so you got to understand these things. You can't just say, oh, yeah. I'm going to lock you up. I don't care what you're going through. Uh, your kids need to go to school. I get that. Education is important. It is. But you're going to lock my mama up because I couldn't make it to school? How's that fair? She also opposed for the release of nonviolent offenders who pretty much sold weed. And it's contradictual. It's contradictual, and the reason why a lot of people are giving her backlash about this is because she admitted in some way, shape, or form that she smoked weed. 
Now, let's go down this hypothetical uh, dream lane real quick. You smoked weed, right? So, I've been pulled over a couple of times. I, I know how police, you know, jab you. So, let's just say you... Let's just say you got unlucky one day, right? And the day that you bought this weed, you didn't successfully get to your destination. You get pulled over, and now you have weed in your car. And then the police are like, well, where are you going? This weed is illegal. Uh, they can try to charge you with uh, distribution uh, and the control of an illegal substance. You know, I'm using your legal terms that you would use in court, right? So, um, it's kind of like, what, what's that old saying? You can't call, uh, you can't call a, uh, that's like calling a, um, calling the kettle, a pot calling the kettle black. You know what I'm saying? Like, you smoke weed yourself, but you won't release, you know, nonviolent offenders. I'm not justifying selling weed or at that time they call it selling drugs. I'm not justifying it. You know, they put it as a crime to each his own. But uh, for you to no, keep their ass locked up because they sold weed when you bought weed and you smoked weed. That's like, we call you goofy in the street. Like, seriously, like, that's, we would call you goofy because it's, that doesn't make any sense. She also, um, disproportionate, she, so, here, here are the pluses, because I'm not going to bash her. Here, here are the pluses that she acknowledges in some, in some of her interviews, right? The disproportionate charges based on race. So, like, how... Um, me being black, I'll get slapped with a whole bunch of charges out the book versus if I was white, um, I would probably get a lighter sentence. They might be dropped down to a misdemeanor to where I won't have to do any jail time. So those type of issues, which is true, which is true. Um, the unfair bailout system for, uh, people without money. So that's a plus that she says that she's fighting for. Um, I will bring these things up because these things are real issues in black and brown communities or people of color communities. Um, as far as for people with money can get bailed out with ease and people who just were broke. We broke, we broke. Okay. Uh, that's probably why you caught us selling, selling weed. That's probably why you caught us doing this and doing that. We're broke. We don't have the same means. Um, but anyway, you know, as far as the unfair uh, bailout system, so people with money can bail out with ease and people who don't have money or are broke, y'all stuck until seeing the judge on Monday, which is why you never want to get arrested on the weekend. Don't ever get arrested on the weekend. Uh, but one thing she did do that we don't like, that's a negative. She opposed the bill investigating fatal shootings involving police officers. I quote her. She said this. She said, I did not oppose the bill. I just did not weigh in on it. So here's what I hear when you say that. <clears throat> so to me, not speaking is the same as not disagreeing. Okay? I don't care that you didn't say, no, I'm fighting against this. And you just sat back in the corner and just be like... Like, you don't hear what they're talking about. And to me, that is the same as when people say not voting for Biden or her is the same as voting for Trump. You can't play tit for tat with these things, all right? So to me, not speaking or not opposing the bill is the same as not disagreeing. And you can't do that. You know, if you're going to fight for something, fight for it all around the table. Uh, and I think that's the struggle that a lot of people are having with her in general. We don't know where she lies, and a lot of us feel like it's propaganda, that she's pandering towards black people, um, just trying to get their votes. We want to know that you are truly for us. 
We don't need any Ben Carson people in the White House. Okay, it's already called the White House. And what I mean is when I say this, because every ethnicity, every race has these people, just because uh, she looks like us or we or you look like me, that does not mean that you have my interest or the interest of your own people, us as a people, in mind. You can be selfish. She can have her own self-interest. So we're, we're, we're worried. We are worried, and me as a millennial... Me as a person fighting for change, me as an activist who believes that there is power in my vote, not the power for the presidency. I mean the power to change the governmental system. You start from the local and then you build up. So I want to start with the mayor first off, but just in general, there's some form of power in my vote and I'm not going to give you my vote um, just because you look like me. I love you as a black woman, um, just like I love all black women, but I'm not just going to vote for you just because you look like me. I'm not. I need to know that you're that we're fighting for the same interests. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. I care that you fight for us as a people. Regardless that we disagree, we still want to see our people do better, be better, become better, have advantages. Um now what plus side she did say is that she want Medicare for all. I please support that. I I Pretty sure that our previous president, Barack Obama, had already implemented that with Affordable Care Act. But okay, you know. Um, now, here's another negative. There are negatives and there are positives. Like I said, please make your own independent choice about who you're going to vote for. But I just want you to understand uh, or see what may be the dilemma with the masses. She has no plans for reparations. I am a very strong pusher for reparations. And it's not that I don't think other people deserve anything. I just know that my people, black people who were brought here forcefully, who were forced upon labor, uh, free labor, uh, who got killed and murdered and raped, um, who got taken away from their heritages, their languages, were forced to learn your language and your version, your version of the Bible, not our own, um... And then we got no wealth, even after we were hypothetically or on paper set free. So I do believe that uh, my people are owed reparations. Very true. She has no plans for reparations. What she's going to tell you is that she has a plan or a proposal called the LIFT Act, which is bullshit in my eyes. The LIFT Act is bullshit. So what she says the LIFT Act is, and there's an actual interview, I'm not speaking out of my mouth. Um, she says, give people who are making 100K or less as a family a tax credit towards their income. And for you guys who don't know what a tax credit is, it is that a tax credit is like a, a bump on your refund, right? It's that when they say, uh, what is the what is the term? It's slipping my mind. It's slipping my mind. A uh, write off. Right. Tax credit is like a write off. It's sim similar to a write off. Right. It's just a bump on your tax return. It doesn't really help you. Right. And then um, she tries to implement saying that all oh, this helps black people in return, which there are the majority of the issues are for black people. They're not helping black people. Mm -mm. No, we're, we're, we are not taking that bull anymore, okay? It's just, it's just not happening, bro. I want to fight for reparations, okay? Now, the, the idea to still help people in poverty, you can say that. That's cool. But don't try to uh, misplace it or exchange it for reparations. No. Mm -mm. That, no. No. That's not happening. I don't. I don't want that. We don't want that. Um. And here, here, here's what I'm gonna lay back on. All right. So here's my thing. She goes on the Breakfast Club. You can look it up on YouTube. She literally goes on the Breakfast Club, and says she was the first African American 
Attorney General of California. I want to clarify something. She is black. Yes, she is not African American. She is Jamaican and a South Asian American or whatever that is. Yes, she still belongs to the Afro family, the black family, and the African diaspora. But she is not African American. And on the fact that she did not even correct them, what does that tell you? And then again, I'm not bashing her because I have Jamaican friends. I have Caribbean friends. And I love all my black people in the African diaspora. But if you're going to come one way, come correct. Just let them know, yeah, I'm black, but I'm Jamaican. Just say, just say that. Why can't you just say that? Just say that. And we cool. And I think that's what the problem is, you know. And she brings up her father, uh, Donald, Donald Harris, uh, who didn't like the remarks that she made about, uh, you know, her giggling off her Jamaican heritage and stuff like that. See, he, he didn't like it. He didn't like it. He loves her, but he just didn't like it. Uh, but he fought. They say that he fought for civil rights. I could not find it. I have to do. I probably have to do a, a part two because I was digging, but I couldn't find it. Um, but to give you guys context on numbers, as far as the negative impact that she's had, uh, fifteen thousand or fifteen hundred people were jailed, were in jail for weed violations. She laughed about it after uh, she asked did she smoke weed. Uh, she did fight against the uh, cash bailout system at one point, and she suppressed evidence uh, that would have freed a man for wrongly being in prison. Now, I don't know the context of the case. Um, I don't know if it's true or not. Just on the standpoint of that there's evidence that can free a man on the case. So... I don't know if it was a moral standpoint of why she decided not to bring this evidence forward, but on the moral standpoint alone, that's 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 wrong to take away a man's life if there's evidence saying that he is innocent. I don't care, regardless of color, like just on the context of that, because that happens a lot for black and brown people. We get pushed into the system when even the system can we can prove that they're wrongfully doing this to us. And yet, they don't free us. So for you to do it, still wrong. Still wrong. Now, I'm going to say this. Every person deserves the opportunity to, uh, you know, prove or be forgiven for their wrongdoings. And I think really what the majority may be asking is that you acknowledge your wrongdoings because she 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 would before she got elected as Biden's VP Biden's VP she asked him to do the same thing when it went to the integrating or fighting against the busing for integrating on a federal level she said her words you can go watch the video she said you have to acknowledge that you may have been wrong about fighting against this proposal why won't you acknowledge that you were wrong? So Kamala Harris, or however you say your name, just acknowledge that you may have been wrong to fight against or not even speak on some of these proposals that you're supposedly battling for now. Okay, just, just do that. But if you agree or disagree, please like or share. Shout out to my podcast. Please follow my podcast on Spotify, Google Cast, uh, Anchor, those are all my sponsors. I uh, appreciate you guys watching my show. Peace and love. I am the Lost African, and I'll holler at y'all later.